everyone, welcome to my review of the Deepcool Lucifer CPU cooler. Recently I reviewed the Deepcool Assassin. This is Deepcool's second CPU cooler in their Gamer Storm product line, and this time they've done something a little bit more unique. This cooler is actually designed to be used fanless for complete silence. It can also be used with a single fan or dual fans in push-pull. I'm going to be testing all three configurations. I'm also going to put it up against a number of other CPU coolers, including a pre-built water cooling kit and a high-end custom-built water cooling loop. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs. So great packaging, the cooler is well protected under a number of layers. In the box we have a user manual, mounting components for all of the latest sockets, thermal paste, a single fan and the cooler itself. The user manual is detailed and easy to follow. Now for a look at the mounting components and how they go together. This cooler is compatible with Intel sockets through from socket 775 to socket 2011. AMD sockets through from socket AM2 to socket AM3+, plus, including socket FM1. So it's a universal backplate for all of the compatible sockets. These rubber sections help to hold the pins in position. And this makes assembly a whole lot easier. So the backplate obviously goes on the back of the motherboard. These spaces then go on the top of the motherboard and then the brackets go on the top of the spaces and then you have nuts that hold the brackets in position and then this larger bracket holds the the cooler down it's a toolless design although you can use a Phillips head screwdriver for AMD sockets you have these larger brackets for socket 775 there's a small piece of rubber that needs to go on the back of the motherboard for socket 2011 it's a lot easier because all you need to do is screw these mounts into the existing backplate and then you're able to mount the brackets directly to the existing backplate. So now for a look at the included fan. The specifications of this fan, it's PWM 700 to 1400 RPM, 81.33 CFM maximum and 17.8 to 31.1 decibels. It has a hydro bearing. Now the fan blades are actually the size of a 140 millimeter fan. You can see that the frame comes outside of the mounting holes. The mounting holes are at 120 millimeters, and this is so that the fan can be mounted onto a 120 millimeter mount so that Deepcool can use a, a standardized mounting system for their CPU coolers because that's what this fan is designed for while maintaining better performance, the performance of a 140 millimeter fan. So you can see around the inside of the frame is a hard high gloss plastic. This is going to reduce turbulence and increase performance. It's also to help to support the frame, which is made of a fairly soft material to reduce vibration. The fan blades are made from a very hard plastic and they're also fairly sharp. So this is going to improve performance. The fan has a 400 millimeter cable and it's sleeved in a densely woven material. Now looking at the cooler itself. So it has a fairly unique design when it comes to the shape and aesthetics. And the shape is actually designed to fit the theme. Looking down from the top, it's supposed to look like two wings, one on either side. Looking down from the top, you can see the GameStorm logo and diamonds pressed into the top of the cooler. And you can also see the tops of the heat pipes. This cooler has six six millimeter nickel plated copper heat pipes. The base or cold plate is also made from nickel plated copper. The fins are made from aluminium. This cooler has a very low density fin array. It has large gaps between the fins. And that's because it's designed to be used as a fanless cooler. Without fans, without air blowing across the fins, it's easier for the heat to dissipate if there's larger gaps between the fins. But this also means that this cooler can be used in very quiet configurations with fans. For example, I think this cooler with a couple of 1000 or even 800 RPM premium fans in push-pull would perform incredibly well. If you take a look at the amount of fin surface area that has been removed to get this particular shape, it is a substantial amount overall. If the fin surface area had have been maximized for this form factor, you know, it could have meant a small difference in performance. It is something to be considered. Now looking at the base of the cooler, you can see that the two central heat pipes cross over. I think this was done so that the heat pipes line up properly. The cold plate is fairly small, only really just big enough for the heat pipes to pass through. The heat pipes are fairly close to the bottom of the cold plate, about two to three millimeters. And to a certain extent, the closer they are to the base of the cold plate, 
the better the heat transfer is going to be into the heat pipes. Looking at the base of the cold plate, you can see it has a nice mirror finish. I've now installed the cooler onto the test bed. The installation took less than five minutes, so it's quick and easy. As you can see, I've installed it without fans. This is the first configuration I'm testing. The first thing I'm going to take a look at here is the dimensions of the cooler and how well it fits onto this particular configuration. It is a fairly tight fit. The gap between the cooler and the graphics card or the first PCIe slot is only about 10 millimeters. And the gap between the cooler and the memory in the first slot is actually a little bit less than 10 millimeters. And with the cooler turned around the other way, the cooler actually touches the memory in the first slot. And you know, that's without fans. I can't even fit a fan onto the, the cooler on the memory side. But that's only because the memory I'm using is too high. With low profile memory, it will fit underneath the cooler and also underneath the fan. And that's because the cooler has good clearance. It's about 60 millimeters or more between the motherboard and the bottom of the fin array. As you can see around the back of the cooler, between the back of the cooler and the back IO, there is plenty of room. A fan will easily fit there. So the dimensions of the cooler are 140 by 110 by 163 millimeters. With a fan installed, the height is actually 168 millimeters, so it is a very tall cooler. The weight is 936 grams, that's just the cooler itself, so it is also fairly heavy. As you can see, I've now installed a single fan. This is the stock fan, and this is the second configuration I'm testing. You can see that this fan fits easily on this side of the cooler. I've now installed a second fan, so I have two fans running in push-pull. And you can see what I've had to do to be able to install this fan. I've had to remove the first memory module, so I just have a single memory module running now in the farthest slot from the cooler. And still, there's only about a five millimeter gap between the memory and the fan. Now this fan is a Deepcool fan. It's the Deepcool UF120. And the specifications are the following. It's a PWM fan, 500 to 1500 RPM, a maximum of 66.3 CFM, and 17.6 to 27.8 decibels. Now moving on to the specifications of the test bed. The test bed itself is the Primo Chill wet bench. It's the carbon slash clear version. And because everything's on an angle, it is making filming difficult. I'm actually only going to have this test bed temporarily. I'm running the Gigabyte Z87XOC Intel Core i7-4770K, 8 gigabytes of Dominator Platinum 2666 MHz C11, a Sapphire 7770, Corsair Force 3 60 gigabyte SSD, and a Corsair AX650. Before I move on to the test results, I'm going to give you a listen to the noise output of the Deep Cool Lucifer with a single fan and dual fans. I know it's a very inaccurate way of giving you an idea of the noise volume, but it does give you an idea of the type of noise and you know just a basic idea of the noise output. The first was with a single fan, the second was with dual fans, and you can easily hear the difference between the two. Now, surprisingly, the loudest or the most noticeable noise coming from this cooler was the fins vibrating as the air passes through them. And I think, taking a look at the cooler, the fins are vibrating down either side where they're joined. They're not joined tightly enough and you know they're able to move around. The larger the air volume passing through the cooler, the louder this is. And you may have been able to hear it so with, with two fans, it was even louder than with a single fan. And this is really a serious problem. If you want to use this cooler in a silent config, it's just not possible with this particular problem. So hopefully it's something that they can resolve. You know, it may not show up in all configurations, but it was very noticeable with mine. Okay, so as well as the three different configurations I'm testing the Deep Cool Lucifer in, I'm also putting it up against the Deep Cool Assassin, Noctua NHD14, Cooler Master Sidon 240M, and a high end custom built water cooling loop. My test methodology is the following For each configuration and cooling system, I run four tests. I'm running a stop clocks test and an overclocked test. 
For each of those tests, I'm running an idle test and a load test. For the idle test, I cold boot the system and let it idle for 30 minutes. For the load test, I'm running the A to 64 stability test for 30 minutes. I usually use Prime95, but I was unable to use it with the 4770K because I was getting inconsistent results. For a lot of the cooling systems, it was overheating and throttling, so I'll probably use the A to 64 stability test from now on. I have used it in the past, and it is a good test. Now for my overclock, I went to 4.4 GHz, 1.25 volts. Obviously I could have pushed the CPU a lot further, but I had to pick an overclock that was going to give me valid and consistent results for all of the different cooling systems and configurations. Also for all of my testing, I mathematically adjust my ambient temperature to 20 degrees Celsius, and each result is an average of the CPU cores. So some amazing results here. To be honest, the Deep Cool Lucifer really surprised me with the temperature results. Take a look at how well it did up against the Deep Cool Assassin and the Noctua NHD14 in a single fan configuration. You need to consider that I was running dual fans on both the Assassin and NHD14. Also take a look at how well it did up against the Coolmaster Sidon 240M. Considering that the Sidon 240M is a pre-built water cooling kit with a 240mm radiator. And best of all, the results for the Deep Cool Lucifer in a fanless configuration. I did not expect it to hold its own. You know, when I started to run the load test, I expected it to go up over 90 degrees within seconds. It is amazing that you can actually run this cooler on an Intel Core i7-4770K in a fanless configuration and still get excellent results. Now, I couldn't get overclocked results, but you know, still, fanless CPU coolers are almost never a viable solution unless they're on an entry level, extremely low power CPU. So I was very impressed with the temperature results. It's now time for me to conclude this review. First of all, a big thanks to Deepcool for sending this CPU cooler out for review. I'm going to give the Deepcool Lucifer an 8 out of 10. And the reason for the high score is the temperature results, in particular, the fanless configuration results. Something else you need to consider is that my actual ambient temperature during this testing was around 35 degrees Celsius. I only mathematically adjust my ambient temperature to 20 degrees Celsius, as I've mentioned, to give consistent temperature results across all of my reviews. So just imagine the results you would be able to get at an actual ambient temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. You'd be able to get some very substantial overclocks with this cooler in a fanless configuration. There's a couple of small things I'm taking points off for. The CPU cooler is very high. It's one of the highest out there and that is obviously going to be a problem for some configurations. I also think they should have done more for the aesthetics just to give it some more character and to set it apart a little bit more to fit the theme. You know, they have done something small to fit the theme, the shape of the cooler. But I think, you know, maybe even just something else small, such as a red or orange fan. And as I always say, I want to see more innovation. I want to see manufacturers putting more into R&D, trying to take the lead, releasing new technologies with every single component and taking risks. For those of you who are wondering about availability and pricing, I haven't yet seen any information. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and favorite if you want to see more.